I like a little orange inside of my wing orange. It's pretty cool. The baby. Okay, <clears throat> so here we go. Here we have the, the time translator, right? So this is the main map of the operating system. And if you watch the pointer, this is the zodiac. So what you can do is you can actually put on any type of astrological connections uh, on here. Uh, here is 13 moons, so this is one year. And this is one moon, and this is one day. So this circle fits into one of these sections this circle fits into one of these sections, and then all of the cycles fit into the larger cycles. And then in the midpoint here, the yellow, is the connection to the Mayan calendar. This is the 20 energy glyphs. So it's, this brings together our notions of time, plus the, the Josiar Guezes or, or the Mayans. I mean, there's, there's two different systems, right? So it's hard to say which one within here it is Josie Arguez's system and then you have hours and minutes the present moment and timelessness and so what it's this is, field. say that again the toroid yeah like right here is whatever model you want to put that has levels of consciousness in it it's the window what this does is it puts together time and levels of consciousness in one place and gives the mind a structure to bring in levels of consciousness because for the most part, our Western culture is very flat. And um, I think what we're doing is we're, we're saying that there are different media creations that are, let's say, at a higher level of consciousness and are loving better for you than all of the violence and fear generated media that is uh, generally and so for any type of software system or whether it's the bit chain, uh, you need some sort of timing mechanism for when the media is created and when you start a project when you end a project and so what this would be if we used it would be the reference point for when things occur so this currently doesn't really exist in software form and, it, and it's a new way of putting time together. Yeah. And the Have idea is, what's that? Have you, you talked to Elia at all? Uh, He's working with these time systems as well. It's really interesting to hear. No. So, I mean, that's just one part of it. And I think the other part is looking at Planetary Guardians and having shows based on issues, based on solutions, where if we're looking at cold growth forest or we're looking at water, or we're looking at the fish farming, or we're looking at any number of all the issues that we face, uh, we create a, like a community, sort of provincial, national, and international based media system that uses the same structure of time and connects all of these projects across the planet. So the media is just the reflection of the actual work being done by the people and having stories that people can follow. So if you want to be a planetary guardian that wants to protect the old growth forest, here's how. Join the show. And these are all the different ways that you can, but it's international. Yeah. And I think that because the basis of this idea is a business system that has an ethical business structure put into it, that the, the values of, let's say, cooperation, the values of love, the values of mercy, or whatever it is that the, the teams choose, become the mechanisms for what you're going to share. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, bro. I uh, remember I was talking to you a little bit about the soul. Uh, that was a download I had, um, one of my first breath, breath retreats, breath workshops, and it was a tribal field like that it was based in the fibonacci and with uh, uh like the flower of life pattern and that you'd have like expressions of creation as it came out of the bindu out of the center point this balance between the masculine and feminine it had the aspects of like the, the little girl the little boy the mother the father the grandmother the grandfather so it went from like two to the vesica pisces to the three to the six to the 12 24 in it in it and in there was like all levels of like organization and 
SOL was an acronym for Society of Unified Luminaries, which is kind of the opposite of the society that we're in right now, where we're all trying to do it, right? And so the the piece was that the the, the, the wealthy, the, the these bankers and you know, this sort of energy that's been perpetuating on the planet has been done so through trust. Through the trust is one of the high laws. It's like out, out of out of like natural law comes trust law and it's sort of like a way that you can then like enter into the physical dimension. Manipulate it. It's kind of like magic really. And but it's been used in a way that's been black magic for power and control and domination and uh, very reptilian. Mm. Um, but trust in the white magic sense is like creating a container. What's at the center? What are we serving? And once that's established, you can imprint it just like a ceremonial space, a container where we call in the four directions, we call in the archetypal animals and the spirits and Ganesh and all of the, you know, this. And, and having that very deeply encoded at the very get go of, of from the trust. And then the trust is a, now just a container, which you can put any number of non profits or businesses or organizations. Um, but it's all inside of that. What is it serving? What is its point? And then it spirals out from there. And, it, and it, in each ring of the flower of life, you have like you have that you know that sort of next six where it'd be like that's kind of the in, in the indigenous tradition they call that the children's fire. It's like does it serve the children seven generations from now? And that that center container is like the Jedi Order. You know, like they hold that very they hold the you know the force uh, or not hold it but they are uh, conduits for it to flow through connected, yeah connected to the truth um and and then from there you know we would establish the organizations moving outwards and how they enter intermingle and i think that's exactly what you're i mean it seems like they overlay um and uh, so that was, I talked to, I had this random meeting with this gentleman, his name's Jacob. He's got dreadlocks in a bag. His dreadlocks are so long and big that he's got a big knapsack that he carries on the side of his bed. And I met him at the Nam, and uh, he, he said that he didn't sleep all night. And he was meant to meet me there. And we started talking about trust, and he says, this has already been established, but he says the soul is what brings the trust together. It's sort of like a unifying trust. Lightworkers, you know, and so uh, if we can have that ceremony, like literally, like create this this structure, and and then have a circle, bring in some some real luminaries and some like, tribe that to hold that space, and then we can start building out. You know, what are you, what are you, like, you know, these media teams and these portals and nonprofits and that kind of thing? Um, I see us all eventually having a Tesla and a card. The car just takes care of your food and your clothes and, you know, you don't you just have enough. You always have enough, you know. We don't have that limited idea. I, it's funny, even on the Disney put in, in Star Wars, they put the uh, the that the ships. They were like, I don't know if you've seen the new Star Wars, but Not yet. They've, there's this sort of like plot point where the ship is running with fuel. And, and I thought that's interesting because like if you go back, there was, you know, there's always like a, some type of troidal energy power creation system, you know, and now they've got this limited fuel supply, like, and then, you know, they're going to take this destroyer ship and like bring it to some gas station somewhere. It's just ridiculous. But that's that same mentality, right? Where inside of this space, it's, it's encoded with high like we are we are serving the highest good of all and that we are eternally abundant there's nothing that we need and uh and so just like dissolving ownership uh because that's another thing that you, you can't take that with you there's no like luggage racks and purse mm -hmm. <laughs> it's um it's an idea that has failed us and we we have to dissolve that and like, look at what happens if you uh, collectively own a boat or something like that, you know? You're, now you're hanging out with your friends. It's about, a, you know, a tenth of the cost. Um, you know, it's just easier to maintain and upkeep. Everything's easier when we work together. And so that's 
a part of that encoding inside of that. Thing. Once we have that nailed down, then we can like, yeah, then everyone starts getting nourished. Like guys like yourself that have been like on the front line, like, you know, dumpster diving. I don't know what you've done for food, so I'm sure you probably dumpster dive lots of times. <laughs> but you know, I just really want to say I love you, brother. I appreciate you and you are uh, admiral. You know, you're like front line of, creation station and i appreciate all that you're doing there and what you're creating and um yeah let's take that let's take it to the next step and, and implement your uh, your system there so what is the next step do you think from your end i i get caught up in in multiple next steps uh i am over the holidays got uh, in, connected to a school in uh, uganda and oh, wow. I, I've since learned that there's a half the people in Uganda, like I think are under 15. Like it's, and they, they, they had a series of, you know, sort of brutal dictatorships and the, the, the person who's been in charge, I guess has created a little bit of stability for the last while, but I, I don't know much about it, but there's a, there's a team of four people that are wanting to build a school for 500 kids. And he sent me his business plan. We're starting to look at it. And I, I'm just, I'm starting with a much slower, approach with people to find out exactly where they're at and then look at what they're doing and then offer, you know, sort of the operating system. But I, I know that, you know, just going from squares to circles is a big thing to go. But what we're doing is changing the actual timing mechanism. And mm -hmm. Jose Arguez, I just watched a video of his this morning and his main message, if he had one main message, he was saying to, to shift out of the mindset, the violence and all the, the fear-based thinking, we have to change the timing system. That's, we're on a false timing system. And that's, mm -hmm. that's like space age rocket science to most people. We can't even consider. We're not, we're not honoring, we're not honoring the feminine, the, the actual yeah. natural intuitive flow. That's arising naturally in the moment. You know? mm -hmm. I, I piss a lot of people off because they're like, they can't get me to structure something, you know, and I'm, and, and I'm working with that because it's definitely like, I'm more in that space and working towards being more structured, but a lot of people don't understand it. You could just make well, a choice. <laughs> I, I even think this is a, like the difference between, let's say the masculine and the feminine or the, the reason versus intuition versus a whole new time structure. Like it's both of those are, are like, and they're both connected mm -hmm. because the, the 13 moon calendar is more feminine moon-based, intuition-based versus 12 months, which is like brought in by the Romans to sort of subjugate the world. Yeah. So we're... Yes, the, well, mm -hmm. Just oh, as true. Well, I was. <laughs> um, so, it, I mean, it's, it's a big step, but if it's built within the infrastructure at the software level, you know, it's, it's just the press of a button. It's just the arrangement of the interface. It's just, you know, we just start doing things differently. And I, I think that we need to, there's a, there's a big step towards making, let's say, the software side of this, which I guess would be the info matrix and making the operating system versus the people side, which is bringing people together. And I, I've seen that if you put the operating system first, uh, you, you will lose the people. But if the people forget the operating system, you lose the idea. And mm. most people, when they get together, what I've seen is they're scrambling for structure. They're scrambling for, you know, they make their committees and they make their, their teams and their pods. And at a small level, it can be fine. But as you get bigger and bigger and more complex, it gets harder and harder. And I think that the structure, if it's embedded within the whole organization and it's, it's used, but not um, sort of, a, it must be done with love. It must be done with patience. It must be done with, a slow small steps in the right direction and that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned because we humans as a I don't think we trust new structures anymore we don't trust structure in general because most of the life it's been used to control us in a way that we, we didn't want and now we want freedom and we want you know a whole new world but it you know freedom without structure uh, goes nowhere and so it's a uh, it's a big step I think but I believe that there's certain people that hold keys to it and they need to be around each other long enough to share the knowledge they have in order to build what we, what we can feel coming through us, but we still quite don't know how to do it. Yeah. 
yeah, the steps that we need to take in order to actually do it. Well, I mean, from what I see as far as the ICOs, there, um, you know, there's like a hundred new ICOs every day, and uh, I don't think it's it takes that much. I mean, the system doesn't have the tech doesn't have to be fully in place in order to launch because it's a, it's an initial offering essentially you're saying this is something we're going to do or we need some funding to raise it um and a lot of them don't even have a team yet you know but obviously it's nice for us to put together a few key luminary filmmakers and, you know get like barnett bain you know, uh, from what dreams may come on so you know put, put, bring some people on that you can sit you can say show people yeah we're we're doing something really grand here and beautiful um but other than that I, mean, I think it's just a really great website um and, and, a, and, a, and a structure that really like the white the white sheet that can show our sort of action plan and what we're planning to do how we want to actualize um and then like you know, um, like launch it uh i mean i've been buying up the ios i, I got love uh, I got overunity.io, I got unity coin. Uh, you know, these are you know the same frequency band that we're, what I was talking about. But yeah, putting something like that that sort of is it could be the nexus, you know, it could be that that container that holds all of these beautiful projects. Or at least Okay, so I think what we probably need is we need to agree to a few things. Um, one, I think we should, for 2018, look to have a weekly call like this, where we check in either with ourselves or with others, but we check in to see what we've done, what we're not doing, what we expect. You know, just we have to have some consistent contact because I find if I go too long without talking to somebody, if I'm in connect with a project, it, it just I, I get scattered. Yeah. Um, yeah. I need consistent communication now uh, just to keep me stable, I think. Um, that's, I think, one of the most important things because I think if what's different about this is I don't think either of us want to get locked down into some insane project management schedule where, you know, we have to kind of meet these deadlines because uh, sometimes they're just not, they can't happen. Certain things have to fall in place and sometimes it's in a very weird, synchronistic, intuitive way. Mm -hmm. I think we're both like that. Um, I, as soon as I spoke with you, certain interfaces came in. It's, it's like the wizard needs to have the other to work with. Mm -hmm. so you, you have a general vision. It may be a bit vague, but you sort of like, as the captain of a ship, you have an idea of where you're heading. Mm -hmm. And the whole operating system is based upon teams that do have sort of like leaders that work together to figure out how to get their ship somewhere. So the metaphor of a ship as the business system that we're all working together to get this sort of container uh, to some sort of destination. And each of us is doing a sort of job, right? But it's, it's in the newest sphere. It's like the new world is us making these containers in this uh, internet sea and uh, figuring out how to work together, right? From isolated different places. And so if, if we're the living example of the vessel, like we have to do it first with ourselves. So the team that comes together to actually create this has to use the operating system, which means we have to learn it, which means we have to go through the process of creating it. And as we do that, uh, we will learn how to build it. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like pioneers coming to a new place. Beautiful. Uh, you, you may not know how to do it as you go. So we're going to have to add people, perhaps in a Fibonacci sequence, onto the team. And if there's one thing I would say is if people come onto the team without a synergy, if, if there is an agreement around who comes in and why and when, the container yeah. gets burst and then trust drops and then the thing falls apart. Yeah. Trust has to build. Trust has to be this be the sort of backbone. Yeah. So, and sometimes it's kind of like you have your members, your allies, your customers, your competitors, opponents, and enemies. These are the six main sort of distinctions for humans. And whether we like it or not, we sort of assess with our mind whether who someone is and who are they to us. And when we have come up to some sort of 
agreement around what the boundary is with the person, then we, we interact with that person differently than other types of boundaries. And so whoever the members of the team are very different from the allies, very different from the customers, but in this world we're moving into, we don't even know who anyone is really because we're all family. We love everyone. You go to a festival and, and everyone loves each other. But when it comes down to business, it's very different because certain people put a lot of work in, certain people are carrying the vision and other people may take some time to get on board about what exactly is actually happening. And I think when you're coming up with big amounts of money, you're going to have a whole bunch of people at some point, your best friend, or wanting to participate because they want to participate in getting access to whatever you're doing. But there's only certain people that may sort of fit the vision or um, really get what you're trying to do. And you need some sort of filtering system uh, that is fair and fun and good. Uh, to find those projects and I think each of us and whoever's involved that this is going to be one of the big things is who do we choose to spend our time with right. Which projects to each of us kind of say, okay, well, these are the ones I'm backing and We help each other back each other's projects and there's certain projects will be will be will be on the same team But other projects we won't yeah, and maybe we'll be at a bit of a distance, but we still can help out overall so yeah, we'll be like, we'll be sort of like, yeah, I think that's what you're doing already is eventually you're going to have other content creators that you're sending out in the field for these various aspects of the guardians. And so you have to be overseeing and making sure that those like, captains are, are strong and, and dedicated and committed. Uh, can I, let me just show you one more thing here. I'm just going to put